it's distracting me it's distracting me too yes it's yes. bouncy um <laughs> hello and welcome to real horror case files where i solve i tell you all about the scariest and most horrific true crime and paranormal po- um paranormal stories this is a paranormal podcast um yeah. from around the world <laughs> joining me as always is the lovely Chantel. hi everyone Ow. um this is weird because it's a tuesday is it yes. a tuesday no it's a wednesday it's a wednesday no nope, because tomorrow's it's, it's wednesday because tomorrow's thursday Chantel, it's supposed to be halloween night halloween night. it's a monday halloween is on a tuesday i thought it was a monday no it's on a tuesday are you sure about that i'm looking at the calendar right now are you sure you're looking at the right year? This is this is great. The listeners are gonna just see how we how we uh, argue with each other. <laughs> it's on a Tuesday. Happy it Tuesday, everyone! Tuesday. Happy Halloween! Oh, I like. I thought it was on a Monday. No, nope, it's on a Tuesday. It's on Tuesday. <laughs> uh, happy! Wow. Halloween. Sure, happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. This is this is uh not your usual Friday release. This is a very special episode. Um because we were like this is a horror true crime paranormal podcast. Why aren't we going to do something Halloween? Exactly. Exactly. So um yeah, this is our this is our first annual Halloween episode. <laughs> yep. Um as you can see from our hats we're both dressed up as witches. Um, this uh, very last minute. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> this I pulled out of my closet. I I bought this at the dollar store. It's very, see, it's very it's very bouncy. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh. God! What have we become? Anyways, um, happy Halloween, everyone. Today, we've decided that for our first annual Halloween party, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta do a little nod to the hats here, because we're gonna be talking about the Salem Witch Trials. Yes, we are. Um, I thought before doing research about Mm -hmm. this, I knew what the Salem Witch Trials was. Yeah. And, like, I kind of did, but, like... I kind of didn't. Oh. Okay. So this that was fun for me. Um I watched a lot of um uh what you call it? Um Yes, sorry. I watched a lot of documentaries. My brain is fried. Um Yeah, watched, you worked today. I did. Was... I worked tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, um, me too. I watched a lot of uh, documentaries on this um, and um, read a lot of stuff so I'm excited for today I'm excited too I love yeah. I love learning about the Salem Witch Trials it's, it's terrible what happened but it's really interesting it's funny especially how, the theories yes so it's it's funny how um, the on TikTok there's the whole what's your Roman Empire oh my god <laughs> Like, a lot of the times, women are like, the Salem Witch Trials is our Roman Empire. See, I have too many Roman Empires to count, so... Yeah. Like, every, every, everything on TikTok, on Instagram, on social media, any, any topic throughout history is my Roman Empire. (laughs) I mean, you're, you're in history. You're studying history, so... Yeah, literally, any, I would hope. literally everything is my Roman Empire. Even the Roman Empire is my Roman Empire. I gotta think, what's mine? I don't Honestly, have one single like, one. Truthfully, I think the one that I like for the longest time um, would always think about is as my Roman Empire is Lord of the Rings. Oh, I would yeah. never guess that. Yeah. I would have never. I would have never guessed that. I. I, think I have. About I think about I Lord have, of the Rings at least once a day. I have so many. Like, my brain will filter through, like, every single fandom I'm in um, at least once a day. 
<laughs> as you yes, know also the, I other one, the other one is Akhtar yeah I could see that for you I not so much for me but for I'm, you for sure I'm waiting for a sticker to come in from a, a small shop from Etsy um, I don't remember what who the creator is but when I when I when it comes in I'll show you I'm so excited okay um anyways so this let's talk about one of our roman empires the salem witch trials <laughs> Salem witch trials. <laughs> um, you know i actually mm-hmm. did a, a a project on the salem witch trials so why did when why I, didn't you school? do why didn't you do the research on this and um <laughs> well because it's your show first of all <laughs> i didn't want to step on your toes um second of all um i completely forgot not gonna lie you do that a lot <laughs> we were, that we were recording um salem witch trials this week yeah. and it's a so funny because the resources that i had to use for the salem witch trials were archived documents from that time period in the salem witch trials and mm. i still have the website why didn't you give me the links you want the link i can give you the link now <laughs> right now. it's already done anyways but you can chime in then if you're um, what I what I remember this was like um, this was during COVID times and um, as we all know COVID went by so quick I don't even remember it. I it's it it's, felt like it was both the longest point in history and the shortest yeah like you know it felt like COVID though? spanned ten years but it didn't but it didn't but you know what I want to like so we're gonna get into the show like into the the history of it but. It happened within, like, a year, kind of like how COVID happened within, like, a year and a half, two years. So I wonder if, like, you know how we say pre-COVID times Mm -hmm. and all that? I wonder if they're, like, pre-witch trial times. Um, Yeah, I don't think they would because, you know, they didn't think like that. But I would like to think that they do. I would like to think that they did that. Yeah. Yeah. No, wrong way. I wasn't in the middle. Oh, it, I didn't notice. To me, it seemed like you were in the middle. Oh, okay. Without further ado, let's get into the history of this. Salem with trials. Let's. So, um, this all happened, The specifically those Salem with trials, happened in colonial Massachusetts between early uh, 1692 and mid 1693 now um keep in mind that people being accused of witches and in the witch craze and all that stuff has been going on for um thousands of years before this yeah even started yeah um so all of this just happened in colonial massachusetts Um, so with this, more than, uh, 200 people were accused and about, uh, 19 executed. Um, in 1711, this is just a brief overview of everything, by the way. In 1711, colonial authorities pardoned some accused and compensated families and, um, more recently, in July of 2022, Elizabeth Johnson Jr. was the last convicted Salem witch um, to be officially exonerated. So, like, 300 years in the future, yeah. she got exonerated. Yeah. Yeah. Getting back to it. <laughs> back to our regularly scheduled yes. episode. Um, so, leading up to the the main witch trials in Salem. Many religions mm-hmm. around the world taught that the devil could give people known as witches power to harm others in return for their loyalty. Um, the witchcraft craze happened mm-hmm. through Europe from the early 1300s to the end of the 1600s, um, and tens of thousands were executed for being quote unquote witches. Yeah. So, as I said before, like, this has been going on for thousands of years before this even occurred in Salem. Well, even, like, even in um, 
other not so much the same kind of religious ideal as as having the devil but there were a lot of people who you know believed in um one person angering like you know the gods and needing to unalive that person mm -hmm. in order to make it right so this yeah. is something that we see even outside of you know specific religions yeah. it's not necessarily always just a witch mm -hmm. yeah um so let's talk a little bit about king william's war because this particular event in colonial america really put a lot of strain on the people of Salem. So English monarchs William and Mary started a war with France. Mm -hmm. What else is new? Um, in the American colonies, and they called the the colonists called it King William's War. Conflict among religions, uh, sorry, conflict among regions in upstate New York, Nova Scotia, and Quebec caused refugees to move to the county of Essex, which is um, Salem Village in the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Salem Village is actually present-day Danvers, Massachusetts, and Colonial Salem, sorry, Colonial Salem Town is now Salem, Massachusetts. So there were two Salems. Yeah. Um, so the displaced people became, um, were, were a strain on the resources, and it caused a lot of tension between the people in Salem at this time. Um, and another person that really put a lot of strain on, on the people who really should have been the one reassuring everyone is Reverend Samuel Paris. And Reverend Samuel Paris is the first ordained minister in Salem Village in 1689, and he gained a reputation of being rigid and greedy. And ah. everyone believed that it was everything that's been that that has been happening. They all believed it was the work of the devil. Yeah. Well, they didn't have science to explain a lot of this stuff, so no. They went with the most obvious explanation for them, which was, you know, the devil. Yes. So okay. let's talk a little bit about Samuel Paris. Samuel okay. Paris, he was born in England, London, England in 1653. And in the late 1650s, his father moved the entire family to Barbados, where he pur purchased a sugar plantation. Um, Paris went to Harvard in, 17, in 1673, but he left without graduating because his father had died and he had to move back to Bar uh, Barbados. And there he became a sugar merchant in Bridgetown, but was unsuccessful. So then he decided to move to Boston in 1680 with his two slaves, uh, to, uh, Tichiba and John Indian. Um, Tichiba is going to be a very important figure in this story. So yeah. remember, remember her. Um, Mary Elizabeth, and he married elizabeth elridge together they had three children thomas betty or elizabeth and susan um and he he tried to be a merchant um there as well in boston but um he decided to become a minister instead so in 1686 he would be a guest minister in different churches across boston um, and then in 1688, he applied to be a new minister in Salem Village, which he got and officially started in July of 1689. Now, previous ministers had always some kind of conflict here, um, such as salary not being paid or um, they didn't have access to firewood or um, they needed renovations done to the church, but they couldn't get access to those because funding was very low. So, um, and during this time, it's not uncommon to have one minister be the reverend of a church for, like, their entire lives. 
But here, there were three ministers within the span of 16 years, which was not uncommon, which was very strange. But what happened to the other ministers? Did they die? They left because they weren't being paid. Oh. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I would leave too if I wasn't being paid. <laughs> I mean, fair enough. It's like, fair. yeah. I mean, would you would you stay at a job if you weren't being paid? No, absolutely not. Anyways, exactly. It, yeah. Um it it was just like during that time, it's uncommon to see that many reverends go through a church within that short of time. You know what I mean? So Sure. So he became like the fourth one in 16 years. I mean, I don't know much about about reverends uh, going through the rate of reverends going through churches in that time period. But I mean, I don't know. Because I huh. think that like back then you were the reverend of your town and you were the reverend yeah. until like the day you died. Yeah, but you could die early. Yeah, but these it was guys, like the 1600s. These, these ones didn't. I'm trying to put that. Yeah, out, but like I mean, if you think about it, would you would you really stay at a place that you weren't getting paid, even in that time period, especially in that time period? No, but that I'm saying it's not. It that's not normal. I'm trying to tell you that everything here <laughs> isn't normal. Okay. 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 <laughs> and that usually let's, let's doesn't just say, happen. Okay, we'll just say it's not normal. I don't have enough um, information to say whether it is or isn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll believe you. Don't worry. I trust right. you. It's not normal. Um, one of these reverends um, was George Burroughs, who um, we will get back to in a little bit. Just a little teaser there for you. Oh, I thought you were going to say that he was hot or something. <laughs> I don't know. There's no, there's only drawings. There's no, there's no like photographs. Just, just the face evidence. you made had me anticipating you being like, have you seen a picture of this man? A portrait? Shut he up. is have you smoking. Seen this man? <laughs> have you seen this man? New, he is the new standards that he everyone has to try to beat. <laughs> but I mean, if maybe if his history isn't that great, maybe not. Uh, his was not the greatest. Okay, so maybe not. <laughs> maybe he's got a tear. <laughs> well, it was pretty sad. Anyways, we'll get to him in a minute. We'll oh. get to him in a minute. Okay, okay. Um, so because the, the tensions of warring factions in Salem Village and Salem Town, um, Paris would not try to lessen it at all, um, mm -hmm. but instead he would accuse it all as a result of witchcraft and the devil's work. So he basically, like, kept feeding the fire. Yeah. Um... He was convicted. He was convinced that they, uh, which is infiltrated the churches, including his own, and would preach about destroying witches, which caused tension between people, and um, was all caused by the devil. That's hmm. yeah, interesting. So let's get to the first accusations. Okay, because um, it's just it's interesting because I think, don't quote me on this because it's been a few years. But I think I remember reading somewhere that um, back in the back in that time period, which could constitute anybody who was not considered within the societal norm. So like it could you could be accused, Sally, you could be accused of being a witch for reading too much. I mean, not that they read very much anyways, but you could be a witch um, for reading too much. You could be a witch for, you know, not going to a party. You could be, you know. Yeah. Like there so, was like a it's lot. just I've... it's crazy. I and don't quote me on that because I could be wrong, but I think I remember reading somewhere that like back then they used to like accuse a lot of people of being well, a witch for not being mind. within the societal norm. You know. So so keep in mind, two hundred people were accused. Yeah, that's a lot of people. That's if a lot you of people in a village or town. Yeah, but how big was this? How many people were in this village? I, like, it's colonial uh, America, so it's uh, let like... Let me, let me, let me uh, do a little It's like the Google. beginning of people coming in from Europe. The population of Salem and village at the time of the witch trials cannot be stated with precision, but a reasonable estimate for population of the combined area was about 2,000 with a population of... Salem Village numbering between 500 and 600 residents. 
So Salem Village, they're saying estimate between 500 and 600 people. 600 people. Of and those, 200. Let's say it's 600 200 people. people. Let's say it's 600 people. Of those 200, of those 600 people, 200 of them were accused of being That's a witch. Like one third of the people. Yes. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Maybe they were just bored. There's a lot of theories behind this, so we'll get into it. Like it seems it's it's that's that's a lot of people to be accused for such a small village. Like yeah. that's crazy. Like like let's and 600 is like they're guessing is the max. It could be more, but it could also be less. They don't know. It's a rough estimate. Um but that's crazy. That is. It's, it's 200. See, this is why I'm I need to know specifics because my brain will go to these places. It's I need really to think hard, about it though, for like when you're when you're going that far back into history it, to it find is it's this because like you it is quite a far ways back and documents do get destroyed. Um, people hide. It's a lot easier to hide, especially yep. in the people colonies with documents. documents, right? So it's it is hard. Yeah, but there's also there is also signs to it like but I mean yes, it is hard. <laughs> yeah. So, um uh in January of 1692, Paris's daughter Elizabeth or Betty, who was age 9, and niece Abigail Williams, age 11, started having what they call fits. Basically, they were screaming and yelling, throwing things, making strange sounds, and contorting their bodies in strange ways. Uh, local doctors blamed supernatural factors. Um, <laughs> yeah, their health care their health care wasn't great. <laughs> no, so you you do have to keep that in mind that like it is the 17th century. And I mean, you'd like you'd like sneeze and 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 doctors weren't that educated. Yeah, like, like you'd sneeze become, and they'd be like the devil just exited become, your body. To become a doctor back then, you just had to be, be an apprentice to a previous doctor and know how to chop someone's leg off. Yeah, and even then, and they really, didn't even do that. Yeah, correctly. Yeah. And it's like it's like it's like I said, like they'd sneeze and they'd be like the devil just exited your body. So, yeah, yeah, and a lot of religious influence. Yeah, especially especially in um, towns like Salem. Yeah, Puritan towns. Yes, absolutely. Um, so and the reason why this became a big thing with the girls having fits is because Anne Puntham Jr., who mm -hmm. was age 12, also experienced similar episodes around this time as well. Hmm. So, on February 1692, under the pressure of colonial officials Jonathan Corwin and John Hawthorne, uh, the, the girls blamed three women for affecting them. The first was Tituba, who was mm -hmm. Paris's uh, slave. Sarah Good, who was a homeless beggar, and Sarah Osborne, who was an elderly, impoverished woman. You notice how those three women don't fit into the societal norms? Nope. Nope. Yeah. And the thing is, the three girls, they were pressured into it. They were pressured to name names. Yeah. So, um... Let's talk about when the trials begin. So on March 1st, 1692, was the first of many days officials and the local magistrates um, interrogated the women, the three women. Uh, Good and Osborne claimed innocence, but Tituba confessed, mm -hmm. quote, the devil came to me and bid me serve him, end quote. She described detailed images of black dogs red cats yellow birds and a tall man with white hair who wanted her to sign a book she claimed that she signed the book and there were other witches wanting to get rid of the puritans um and here's what i think of this paris was known for not being the best of people mm -hmm. he was abusive 
especially towards the slaves. Mm -hmm. I think Tichiba saw this as a way out for her. And she said, well, they're not going to believe a slave. Mm -hmm. And if they hang me for it, at least they don't have to live this life anymore. Yeah. That's what I personally think. I mean, I could be wrong, yeah. but that's that that is I think she saw she saw it as a way of escape, which yeah. is so sad. I think I I agree with you, but I also think that it's possible that there was the added element of possibly now don't quote me on this because i don't know but it could be possible that paris um paid her or convinced her to play into this because then he'd you know get notoriety for it he'd be seen as the hero yeah and she saw it as well you know if this goes my way there's advantages if this doesn't go my way there's advantages type of thing um yep. just because of how badly she was treated it was just either you damned if you do damned if you don't type thing yeah yeah so after this months of accusations started um martha cory was another one that was accused of being a witch she was charged and she she was a loyal member of the church which greatly concerned the community um because they're like well she she would come to church every week she would um she would you know say the prayers do the whole gospel and all that stuff um so people started to get really concerned because if she was a witch then anybody could be a witch um and they also accused her husband giles Corey, who was 71 years old um he was also questioned, but he remained silent on the matter. And to get him to talk, they laid heavy stones on top of his body until he eventually crushed to death. Mm -hmm. And he still didn't talk. And he still didn't talk. He kept saying, add more. Yeah. Damn. Dude he was hardcore. He was so adamant on, like, I'm not going to talk because I know for a fact I'm innocent and nothing you say or do is going to make me say otherwise. Yeah, dude was hardcore. Like, I would have squealed yeah. the first accusation. Like, I'm not going to lie. I am the, very the thing is, so, so not the way strong that, like that. <laughs> so they would they would be verbally abusive to these women and men because it wasn't just women. It was most majority mm -hmm. of them were women, but um, men were also accused of being witches yeah um they would be verbally abusive towards them during the trial people would um like start like it was anyone could go to the trials right yeah like i think it was all public right it was public trials mm -hmm. so um people in like sitting in the stands would start accusing them for things that i guess they made up i don't know like you know what I mean? Like they would say, I saw so I saw her doing this, this is and this, and this is why she's a witch. You know what I mean? Um yeah. the other way that they would test to see if they were is to um unclothe them and check their mm -hmm. bodies for markings because apparently um witches familiars like toads or birds would suckle on witches and they were trying to see if they had those kinds of markings on them interesting i'd be considered a i'd be considered a witch i have a birthmark on my back yeah i'd be a witch so um they even went as far as questioning sarah good's four-year-old daughter um, oh wow young yeah in her her timid responses were seen as com as confession um and she too was imprisoned and i believe based off of the documentary that i watched from the history channel that she had unfortunately um later died in prison she's four of course she's gonna be timid and like what <laughs> <laughs> like she's four and you're questioning her here's the thing too about like when they were imprisoned um they were charged for their room and board in the jail 
Yep. But they what happens if you die? Pay. That was it. But what happens if you don't pay? I don't know. <laughs> like what? What? Like if they're going to execute you, then they. I guess they would charge the family. <laughs> but what if there was no other family? I don't know, Chantel. This is sixteen, <laughs> the seventeenth century people who thought that they were in the right. Yeah. I mean, but still, it's a big loophole. Like, you can't collect on the taxes if they're dead. No, but they this would This wasn't only, very well thought out. They would only charge, like, if you if you were imprisoned, mm -hmm. they would charge you for food, and they would charge you for um, new hay to get rid of the old, rotten hay in your cell. The hails? Yes. Chantel, we're not stop <laughs> <laughs> i called the the bales of hay at work hails because it just in my mind flowed together and it was one word and now we just call them hails <laughs> ever since then ever since then it's just been hails yeah 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 I mean, yeah, it's the 1600s. Not, not, not a great time. Not a great time for, for. I mean, AC or heat or no. down pillows or you know, nice well, mattresses, memory foam. Mind, like this all mattresses. started. This all started in like January, in in February, right? In right, Massachusetts, right. it's right. cold. Yeah, yeah. I suppose it's it winter. is cold. Yeah. Like, I can't imagine them heating the jail cells. You know what I mean? Yeah, I I couldn't imagine them heating the jail cells either. Yeah. That would be cold. Yeah. So, in uh, in April, Thomas Danforth, the colony's deputy governor, governor, came in and questioned dozens of people during the hearings in Salem and other Massachusetts villages. And in April... April 30th, 1692, Captain Jonathan Walcott and Thomas Putnam claimed that former Reverend George Burroughs was a witch and was examined on May 9th. So, uh, during his trial, they asked him whether, because he had moved to mm -hmm. Casco Bay, okay. and the rumor was that his house was haunted. And so they asked him if his house was haunted, to which he repeat, he denied it. He didn't say, he said, my house is not haunted, but he confirmed that it had toads in it. And toads were thought to be a common familiar of witches. What a weird thing to confirm. Yeah, no, ghosts, nah, but toads. It's got toads. I got those. I got those. <laughs> got lots of like, those. Could you, like, where... Where, where in the house are the toads exactly? Like, are they in the basement? Are they just hopping out of your like chamber pot? Are they hopping out of, tell. out of your cooking pot? Are they just, <laughs> are they like the Harry Potter owls just dive bombing the house? Like, I don't know. He just, that's what he said. <laughs> so they asked him when the last time he took communion was, which he mm -hmm. could not remember. And um obviously that that was a sign of witchcraft because you didn't go to communion i don't remember the last time i ate breakfast and that was probably this morning i mean not gonna lie i mean i couldn't tell you what i ate for breakfast <laughs> but um he he i guess he kind of lost his faith somewhere in there and um he didn't he wasn't an active member of the church anymore. Um, right. And that's obviously seen as a sign of witchcraft. Um, yeah. The The other thing is witches are not supposed to recite any kind of prayers or they're not able to. Yeah, they're um, not able to like fully say the Our Father prayer, I think it is. Yes. The like Lord's from prayer. start to finish the Lord's Prayer. So. Yes, thank you. So on August 19th, George Burroughs, along with four others, were hanged. He continued his claim to claim his innocence, and even on the gallows, he recited the Lord's Prayer from start to finish, which, like I said, it's not, witches aren't supposed to be able to do that. So that confused a lot of people. Mm -hmm. 
And from the documentary that I watched on the History Channel, um, it said that at that point, people apparently wanted to stop the hanging from happening. They, But it was too late. And I mm-hmm. guess there was also fear, too, because if they tried to stop it, that maybe they would be accused of being a witch. Uh, yeah, I guess that would be the other side of it, too. Right? So things now are starting to not seem right with the people as well. Yeah. So on May 27th, 1692, Governor William Phipps ordered the establishment of a social court of oyer, which means to hear, and uh, terminer, which means to decide, in Suffolk, Essex, and Middlesex counties. Bridget Bidship um, was the first accused to stand before the social, the special court, and I think her in particular is, um, from all the research that I've done, like, she's the more, she's, um, I don't want to, sorry, I'm hearing noises, and I'm like, what? I'm not. That's on my end. Um. Bridget Bishop is a name that you will often hear when hearing Salem Witch Trials. Yes, it is. Um, so she was an older woman, um, known for being a gossip and being uh, very promiscuous. Um, her response in court after they accused her of being a, a witch, she said, quote, I am as innocent as the child unborn, unquote. Um... She was not convincing enough because she was found guilty and hung on June 10th at which, um, at what they would later call Gallo Hill, making her the, f- the first one to be hanged. Um, and then everyone else followed. Hmm. I'm kind of jumping around here with the timeline and I'm, I'm sorry, but, um, Yeah. <laughs> So she she was the first. She was like she was the, the first to be hanged. She was the kind of starting point of the kind of craze of the witch trials, right? Yes, yeah, and yeah. It, and that's why her name is so synonymous with the witch trials. Yeah. So Minister Cotton Mathers wrote a letter to the court a few days after, um, after uh, I believe, uh. uh George Burroughs was hanged. Um, And uh, he asked the court not to allow spectral evidence um, to be as seen as uh, testimonies. So what do they mean by spectral evidence? So uh, this is how people were being convicted as witches. Basically, someone would go up on the stand and say, I had a dream. Gotcha. That so and so was, was a being a little one. Okay, so one of them, I don't remember what her name was, and I do apologize. But um, one man went on the stand and said, um, "This lady in the village, I had a dream of her um, lying on top of me, and." being promiscuous he had a wet dream that's what and I that said. convinced that's com- that convinced him that this lady was a witch yes uh other oh, people were saying that they had a dream God. that so-and-so had signed a book and and that was the devil's book making them a witch okay um you mean that's or- crazy that's that's crazy to think of that they were like oh this people had dreams it wasn't just dreams it was visions that people were having apparently during the day i mean like i have some crazy ass dreams as you know but like (laughs) i don't go around accusing people of witches i mean i had a dream that you yelled at me because i was going to buy a pot for a plant and then you yelled at me about it i don't remember why i just know i just know that you were yelling so sally I'm sorry to say, you're a witch. There's a song 
I'm sorry. I have to find the artist. I don't remember her name, but the song is called Witch. Here, it's by Devin Cole. Okay. And um, in the song, she doesn't say witch, but the title of the song is witch, but it's like W-I-T-C-H in like an acronym. Yeah. And in the in the song, she says, um, woman in total control of herself. So, I'm a fucking witch. <laughs> I love that song. Well, yeah, you're you're haunting me in my dreams and yelling at me for trying to buy a pot for my plant. So (laughs) I say, I say you're a witch. I'm a woman in total control of herself. I say you're a witch. Yeah. Um, That was last night too. Like that was literally the dream I had last night. Was that we were at work and I was trying to buy a pot for my plant, and you came and yelled at me about it, and you were like, "What are you doing?" why are you doing this and like i was like i don't know i don't know and then i woke up that's fun yeah um anyway yeah so they that and visions that they would have of people because people started to claim like this would even happen in the middle of the court room Mm. where people would just start screaming and freaking out because they apparently were seeing someone in front of them that wasn't there. Is it possible they just had, like, bad fish or something that was, like, making them go crazy? We'll, we'll, get, we'll get to the theories. Oh, okay. But that's, okay. You're, you're leading <laughs> on to something. You're definitely <laughs> leading on to something. Because, like, I know sometimes if I eat something a little bit wonky, all of a sudden I'm, like, not thinking straight. Or not walking straight either, but, you know. <laughs> There's a lot going on when you don't eat something right. Um, like, like, like I don't know if you've ever had, like, food poisoning before. I have. This, this is it's, it's the reason it's why terrible. I cannot have salmon anymore. Oh, my God. Same. I same. cannot have salmon, salmon anymore because I got so sick after eating salmon. Salmon, salmon and mussels for me. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what was going on. That was what spectral evidence was. And they were taking that as, like, true to the, to the grave set in stone evidence. So I wonder if a lot of women maybe tried to accuse other women of being witches just to protect themselves. I think a little bit of that is, it happened because they start seeing like, oh, well, if if they're taking this woman's word for it, I need to get ahead of it and accuse somebody. Otherwise, I'm going to end up being I, accused I, of being a witch. I think that happened. I got to be honest with you. I think that's what was also going on, too, because it's like in that situation, it's a do or do or die. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, if they're accusing all of these women what's to say that they're not going to start accusing me eventually exactly so i might as well just start pointing fingers to make it look yeah. like i'm on everyone else's side exactly i don't know anyways but minister cotton mathers he he wrote a letter trying to tell them to stop using spectral evidence but they ignored him um of course they did and so within this time Five people were hanged in July, five in August, and eight in September. That's a lot of people. It is. Yeah. Um, and that doesn't include the people that died in the prisons, because that also happened. Yeah. Because they were malnourished. It was cold. The conditions were no, terrible. No indoor plumbing. No. Not that they yeah. had indoor plumbing at that time anyway. Yeah, but I mean, at least at least when you weren't in jail, it was a little, it wasn't great, but it was a little bit more sanitary. Yeah. Um, on October 3rd, father of Mathers, Increase Mather, um, who was the, the president of Harvard at the time, denounced the use of spectral evidence saying, quote, it were better than 10 suspected witches should escape than one innocent person being condemned, end quote. Yes, I agree with that. Smart man. There's, using there's a his couple brain. smart people in the room here. Yeah. But there's there's more people 
that are not. Yeah. And they just, it somehow seems to go their way. Yeah. Um, so, um, after the accus- accusations against um, his wife and the pleas of the village, Phipps, I believe that's how you say his name. I wanted to say Phillips, but I don't think it's Phillips. It's P-H-I-P-S, Phipps. Um, I can't help you there. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, he prohibited any more arrests and released many accused witches. Now, this was only after his wife was being accused Yeah, of I was going to say, <laughs> wow, I, how they turn too, tables, you know? I think, too, at this time, people started to really question the the minister's validity of everything and, yes um and so they were saying like i think we gotta stop you know yeah like they killed one third of their t- or accused one third of their town it's a lot of people <sighs> like, like it's a lot it is a lot they're of good people. if they kept going could you imagine if they kept going how like would it just end when everybody was accused of witchcraft and there the would be like one person saying, left i don't yeah. know like it truly it i don't know it it definitely was a dark time in american history for sure mm-hmm. um so on october 29th he dissolved the court of oyer and terminer and um it was replaced with a superior court of um judic judicature Good words, good words. Thanks. thanks. Why'd they choose why'd they choose the most like complicated words? It could just be because I may be slightly dyslexic and I don't know how to read. <laughs> but it's like for me for me too, they feel like tongue twisters. I yeah. have to say it multiple times to get it correct. Judi Judicature. Judicature Judicer. Judicer? 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 I, think I don't know. It's judicer. <laughs> Anyways, okay. in my head I can say it right, but when I say it out loud. Oh my god, me too. Wrong. I say it correctly in my head, but then the words yeah. don't come out correctly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh that particular court condemned the use of spectral evidence. So they were no longer oh. using spectral evidence anymore. Interesting. It only took nineteen people to die. Yeah. Um <laughs> Um, in May of 1693, Phipps pardoned all of the imprisoned. Um, 19 men and women were hanged on the gallows, as I said before. At least five of the accused died in jail. Um, and they were even accusing animals. <laughs> so two dogs... Oh, familiars. Of, yes, of familiar. so two okay. dogs... Two dogs were killed because they believed to have been linked to the devil and familiars to witches. I was like, how do you accuse animals of being witches? Like, what are the signs of an they animal being witches? They can't defend themselves. Then, like, that's so sad. But then, yeah. Oh, that's so sad. It Anyways. is very sad. Um, it is very sad, but you but you know what? What did you say? Only two were accused? As far as I know. Okay, as so far as far as, as we research. know, only two were accused and... That's good because they did accuse 200, one third of their town. So at least, at least um, not as many animals, thankfully, and like, if, here's were the thing, accused. Like, like 25, let's say it's 20 people, 19 were hanged and at least five died. So let's say it's 25 people, right? 200 yeah. of the 25 That's like twelve, like twelve percent of the people accused died. That's, That's still a lot. a lot. That's a lot. That's yeah. still a lot. That's still yeah, quite a bit. Right, like I just look like yeah. There. Um. Anyway, so that was good math, by the way. That was good you. math. Thank you. That's all, <laughs> that's all <in> here. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> um. So the aftermath of everything. Some involved, including Judge Samuel Sewall and accuser and Putham, who was one of the first, um, they publicly felt guilty and apologized. Um, on January 14th, 
1697, Massachusetts General Court ordered a day of fasting and soul-searching to reflect on the events that transpired. Okay. (laughs) I have a lot of feelings about this, but okay, yes, continue. Um, In 1711, a bill was passed restoring the rights and reputation of the accused and grant them $600 to their heirs. Okay. Um, in 1957, Mass- the state of Massachusetts formally apologized. 1957. Yeah. Just yeah. it was like 300 years later. Yeah. Um, and July of 2022, Elizabeth Johnson Jr. was the last to be pardoned. Um, for some reason, she wasn't part of the group in the 1957 apology why <laughs> like, i don't know it didn't say were they just going like, through... reasons unknown were they going through like the files and being like oh this woman seems like an actual witch and then like fast forward to 2022 or whatever it was were they like actually nah never mind she's not a witch but do you want to know how she became pardoned i i think this is like really great Okay, tell me. So, um, she was pardoned after a successful lobbying campaign done by a class of eighth grade civic students. Yes! That's amazing yes. to me. Go eighth graders, getting yes. shit done. Yeah. Damn. I love that. I love that. It's a yeah. little, little sweet, uh, sweet end to this. Oh um, my goodness. Yeah, like... I have so many feelings about this, though, because it's kind of ridiculous that they were just like, yeah, oops, sorry, we made a mistake. And they're like, oh, no probs, just go soul searching after, like, all these people died and were accused and, like, all this shit. We're going to fast and soul search. Because shit, it drives me, it drives me nuts because shit like that still happens today where people can ruin other people's lives very easily. And then they'll come out and be like, actually, it was a lie. I did it because I wanted attention. Or I did it because I wanted to ruin their life because they, I don't know, did something really minor. And then that... everyone's like, oh, no problem. Yeah. I think that's like, what you know, happened here. I think. Like, you see it all the time and it drives me nuts. Yeah. I think that's what happened here, especially with the first three girls that that really started the accusing. Yeah. They were like. I mean, aside from the fact, like, they were young girls, right? Mm-hmm. I I think um, something may have happened where with um, Tichiba and maybe they didn't like her. And so they just pointed the finger at her. Yeah. And it, and it drives also, me nuts. they were pressured into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, because they were, they were pressured for a name. Yeah. Yeah, it drives me nuts because you see it a lot with young kids accusing other people or other children of things. It's a thing with young kids quite a lot that you see where they either get pressured into it or they just lash out. And then they're just told, you know, you're just a child. Yeah. They don't really get any true consequences for it. No. Which is... um sucks but i mean also it's the 1600s so yeah times a lot of the times a lot of the times in the 1600s they were just like yeah just do a little bit of prayer just go soul searching you know mm-hmm. walk take a walk for an hour and then you know it'll that's your punishment pass. it'll it'll be fine yeah. and it's oh yeah because it's i know we're about to go over theories but i very much feel like it was just people just piling on because they were worried that they themselves were going to be accused of something. I think I think so as well. Well, the theories that I have here are are mostly theorizing why everyone may have had quote unquote spectral evidence. Okay. And visions. So. Okay. Um, Linda Carparelli, Carparell, um in 1976 wrote of a possible theory of these fits um and spectral visions happening to people in salem um which was caused by rye fungus now okay if you accidentally consume rye fungus which would have been common in infected crops yes um, it can cause muscle spasms, hallucinations, and seizures. 
Interesting. Which would also explain the body contortions and um and all that. Yeah. And back Interesting. then back then they wouldn't know what that was. So of course they yeah. would start screaming. Yeah, obviously. Like I would scream too if my body started doing something I didn't know what yeah. the heck was happening. It's scary. It's scary. Yeah. Um, another theory um, is that the infections was a psychoactive um, hymn wood, which is also known as devil's snare. That would so devil's another... snare, devil's snare, you know, afraid of the sun. Another possibility. Um, another theory was um, a mysterious sleeping sickness that um, is is caused by an environmental toxin okay which would explain i guess the the weird ass dreams dreams <laughs> yeah and i guess the visions hallucinations too yeah um and those are all the theories that i have interesting it could have been even a combination of all of them we just don't know but it is possible it could have been I mean, especially because their sanitary practices were not the best. I was just the gonna 1600s. say, like their sanitary <laughs> back then wasn't uh, wasn't the greatest. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah, it wasn't great. It wasn't great. Um, I feel like a lot of crops could have gotten infected. I feel like a lot of people. I mean, we can see from like stuff like the plague. We know that their sanitary practices weren't great, and how quickly things and diseases and stuff spread. So I think it's quite possible. I mean, look at our most recent plague. Yeah, look at our most recent pandemic. They said the, um, the the number one thing that you can do to stay safe is wash your hands. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which is funny um, because um, okay, going to go on a bit of a side tangent, but um, I think it was Poland. I want to say it was Poland, but don't quote me on it. But I remember there was a map um, of the 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 plague, the Black Death. Um, there was a map and it showed how the Black Death had gone through Europe. And there was one portion of it that was just like the Black Death, like barely touched it. Um, and it was like the only spot on the map that wasn't, you know, covered. And it was because part of their daily practice and part of their religious practices was washing their hands every day and bathing every day that was but don't quote me on that because that was like a long ass time ago that I read that that was like <laughs> that was like that was like right after I got out of high school so um a long time ago that was a long time ago <laughs> so don't quote me on that but I remember reading really about that and being like huh because it was just so stark to see this map covered in black where the black death had had mm -hmm. gone through and then just to see this one area that wasn't and it was just because of their sanitary practices so even if it was something you know in salem that just shows you how quickly things spread at least yeah and how you know sanitary practices could spread disease and infections and stuff yeah. um yeah but i think i think it's quite possible it could be a combination of all of the theories plus people being scared and being afraid that uh, they were going to get accused so then they uh, if, accuse like, other people the reverend of your town was so adamant on everything that has happened with like the refugees coming in and all that yeah cause of the because it was the devil's work yeah and witches at play i mean i would be scared too that someone would accuse me of yeah. something that i didn't do like it's a that certainly didn't help yeah because like could you imagine like you go from having one person accusing one person to 200 people being accused and you're just thinking well that's yeah. one third that's one third of the town what if i'm next but and i think the thing too is you have to i would be mind, scared even though they were pardoned afterwards I I still think like their reputation would have been ruined. They're yeah. Because people still would have been afraid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it doesn't just go away overnight. 
It doesn't, yeah. you know, you, it doesn't just, you know, you, you get out of jail after being accused of being a witch and then your neighbor's just going to look at you like you're friends again. Yeah. Like, how do you do that? Like, you, you see someone in the street that accused you of being a witch. Like, if I accused you of being a witch and I was like, hey, Sally, what's, what's happening and you're fresh out of jail? Yeah. Like, you're going to be but like, even uh, the opposite. Like, I don't think people who, who, I think people still believed that there were witches there. That's true. They could have still very well believed. Were, just because they were legally pardoned, that doesn't mean that they were, you know, yeah. reputation wise. I don't think they're um, that they recovered from that. Recovered. Yeah, yeah. It could very well be. I'd see you walking down the street, and then I'd take a wide berth around you because I still believed you were a witch because you came into my dream and yelled at me for buying a pot for my plant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that is funny. yeah yeah could you imagine that's that's crazy like i couldn't imagine still living in the same town as a place where i was accused of witchcraft yeah that is so crazy to me it is crazy and like i think nowadays they have a memorial set up for the they people do. who were who were um murdered um yeah. or died because they were accused of witchcraft mm -hmm. in jail i think the ones i think they have a memorial for those who died in jail as well I think but so. yeah it's, it's just it's sad. so it's it's just crazy for me to think about because like i mean hindsight is 2020 20. us looking back we're like there's all these possible explanations but when that they're living that in no idea. yeah when you're living in that moment in the 1600s you don't have the same level of science you don't have the same level of understanding or reasoning your reasoning is that um, everything is religious. Everything has a religious connection. Um, there's very specific rules that you follow. And anything outside of those rules is considered abnormal. So then, like, taking that into consideration, like, it's it's not too crazy that something like this happened. But at the same time, with us thinking how it is nowadays, it's still really wild, you know? You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know if that made any sense. No, but you're absolutely right because we But it's just it's just us with our own understanding of how science has progressed to yeah. us thinking about it is completely different than how someone from the 1600s would look at the yeah. situation. I think it's so easy for people to say, well, if I lived back then, I wouldn't be like that. But I don't think that's true. Yeah, because you wouldn't you would, have the same reasoning that you did you now. You would still have the same mindset of everyone in that society. Yeah exactly because that's just what that's the only exposure you've ever gotten yeah like you don't so have lucky to be in a world where it's so quick for you to just look up something online or, yeah or um if you don't if something happens within your town or your city you don't automatically like judge you you know what i mean like you don't yeah. you don't come to conclusions you think more logically about it i forget what i was going to say oh yeah okay so like even now with our understanding of science and everything we're still learning things mm -hmm. science is still changing like even stuff that we're like yes this is a definite that stuff is also changing sometimes yeah like you know all the research and vaccines and in COVID and like all these uh, cancer and like all this stuff, we're all constantly learning things and we're constantly changing what we thought we knew. Yeah. Like, it, like I remember when people were panicking because people were like, oh yeah, I mean, I don't know if you remember this, but I remember it vividly in high school where people were like, you know, if you drink coffee every single day, you're going to get cancer. But it was like, if you drank like 10 cups of coffee every day, you'd get cancer. Not like if you drank a cup a day or something like that. Like, I remember when that craze. This is my yeah. second cup today. Not that I'm judging you or anything. <laughs> it's okay. You have your coffee addiction. I have my um, soda addiction. Listen, I've cut back a lot. <laughs> Okay. It you used have to be a lot more because I would uh, uh, go to campus and Tim Hortons was right there. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> they make it so convenient nowadays. Yeah. But like, but yeah. No, but my point hard. is, <laughs> you have cut back quite a lot, and I've cut back quite a lot on my soda drinking because I used to drink like four a day, and now I drink like one a day. Yeah. I I can't stand soda anymore. 
Really? Yeah, oh. I, I just can't. I Unless find it's a rum and coke. I find I the bubbles. Coke I find I find the bubbles um are quicker to like rehydrate me if I have a really like dry throat than actual water does. I drink sparkling. And it's for water. me. It's just it's just ew ew. <laughs> oh my god! I love sparkling water. <laughs> All right, Sally, um, I'm divorcing you as my friend. We have to part ways. I'm sorry, but oh, it tastes like so bad. It tastes like the inside of a shoe. Like, oh. no, it doesn't. It oh, really yes, it good. does. <laughs> no, are you crazy? You know what tastes really good? Brita, wa Brita water, like filtered Brita water. So good. Yeah, oh, it tastes really drinking good. drinking Dasani. So no, it's not. Are you crazy? Yes, it is. No, it's, it's not. Disgusting. Dasani is like drinking, okay, sparkling water. Brita filtered water yeah. is like tasting like, I don't know what, heaven. Let's just say heaven. It's like tasting heaven, okay? It's so good. Um, um, anyways, anyways, my point, <laughs> my point was, I don't even remember what my point was. I don't know. Maybe we should just end it my point. Okay, my point, my point was Halloween. we're... My point was, we're learning new things. Things are changing. Um, coffee used to be considered bad if you drank like it every single day. Now they're saying one cup a day is fine. It's it's always changing, you know. So our perception mm -hmm. between now and the 1600s obviously has changed. Yes, absolutely. a lot. That was my point. Took a while to get there. This is a long <laughs> tangent to get to your point. Well, that was my point. Hey, you did not help, okay? You are the one who got me off topic. Um, That's the bulk of our conversations, anyways. <laughs> yeah, we always end up, we always end up on tangents, and then um, we always end five up hours. Saying, what were we talking about before? Yeah. And then five hours later, we finally finished the conversation yes. that we started. <laughs> Like this is this is what happens at work, right? Because me and Chantel work, but we work in different departments. Yeah. So, um, Chantel will come down occasionally to like get something in the office or whatever, and we'll start a conversation, and then she'll leave because we ended up in a tangent. So then we forgot that we were still in the middle of a conversation. Then she'll come back like two hours later, and we'll continue the conversation yeah. that we had before we had the tangent, but then end that conversation with the tangent. And yeah. it, it just, it's, by the end of the day, we would finish yeah, and sometimes the original conversation. Sometimes I'll come back and then I'll, like, I'll be like, yeah, I'm here for this. And then we'll both see something. And we're like, okay, we should, this, like, needs our attention right now. And then I'll come, I'll, I'll leave. And then I'll come back two seconds later being like, oh, yeah, the original reason why I came back here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you'll be like, oh, yeah, I have it right here. What you yes. need. <laughs> yes. Or sometimes this I'll is... just like, I'll see you coming and be like, oh, wait, I still have to tell you this. I didn't tell you. Yeah. I started yeah. to, but I didn't get to tell you. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's wild times. Yeah. And it's fun because everyone at work knows that about us, mm -hmm. which is, yeah. Yeah, sometimes someone will be like, when you go see Sally, can you bring this item up for me? And I'll be like, yeah, sure. And I'll completely forget because me and you will go on a tangent, even though I have it written down in my like little notebook or on a little, yeah. little sheet of paper. So I yeah. remember. So then you'll text and then I'll me go... and be like, can you bring this up, please? <laughs> yeah, I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Anyways, yeah. thank you for um, listening slash watching to this very spooky edition of um, Real Horror Case Files. Um, yeah. Happy Halloween, everyone. Happy Halloween. I um, am going to bed now. Yes. It is well, late. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, okay. It's kind of It's kind of late. Yeah, sure. Well, when I say go to bed, I mean I'm going to play Baldur's Gate for another two hours. And then, and then actually, for the, the same thing for me, I'll be like, I'm going to go to bed and then I'll sit on TikTok or watch YouTube videos or read on my phone or something for like but then, three hours. But then I'll, I'll end Baldur's Gate after playing for like two hours and then be in bed at like 1030, but then be scrolling through TikTok until 12. Yeah. But then I'll also have my e-reader next to me because <laughs> I would have the intention of reading 
We love somebody multitasking. But then I would just be down the TikTok wormhole. Oh, yeah. So I wouldn't even glance at the book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyways, if you guys have any theories that we didn't mention, yeah, let us know. To... I feel like this would oh, definitely yeah. be a topic that we could do like in a couple years again, um, and just like do a refresher. Yeah, because I'm sure. sure there's so much about the witch trials that I missed, but and um, and I'll send you. Um, I'll actually uh, go through and see if I can find my notes. Yeah. Um, from school about Absolutely. them and I'll send you the link for those um, transcripts I have yeah but that was just like a brief mm -hmm. the, the transcripts are very um there's a lot of them because it's the transcripts of what happened in the trials like when they were actually yeah. talking to the people and the interrogations and stuff so yeah I think my hat's falling apart um mine isn't and this is actually a hat that I had when I was um, in elementary school. So you know, come back. Aww. It's making its it's making its reappearance. That's so cute. And I actually have you. Uh, yeah, I actually have other hats because it's an adult hat. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was it was my mom's before it was mine. There's another one that's just black. It's like more uh, felt almost and it's completely black there's not the spider web Yours design kind of purpley mine is purple too yeah because it's got like it's got like it's got like a bit of blue it's got a bit of purple pink and yellow up in there a bit of green it's multicolored it's a rainbow um i like it and then i also have a hat that is like a wizard's hat because it's not like um a witch's hat with the brim it doesn't have the brim it's just like the top pointy part and it's blue and it's got silver stars on it oh and I think the um, the packaging it came in said wizard, and it was my dad's um, costume from when he was like, from when I was in elementary school. He went as a wizard one year, um, but I don't know where the rest of the costume is. We still have the hat. Don't know where the rest <laughs> of it is. So could have gotten rid of it. Don't know. <laughs> I couldn't answer you Maybe. that. Maybe. You know what? For our next episode, I'll wear a different hat. Oh, well. Um, stay tuned for actually this comes out later in the evening um, you might have already watched Two Phantom Friends where we watched uh, Hocus Pocus that movie the Hocus Pocus the Hocus Pocus <laughs> yeah <laughs> we watched the movie the Hocus Pocus yeah um, anyways uh, thank you for watching slash listening <laughs> um please leave a comment below please share this with your friends share this with five of your friends and yeah yeah be, be... yeah <laughs> i don't know what yeah um be oh. scared be sparkly i don't remember what no, it is. no <laughs> it was uh be spooky be sparkly be scared good night toodles <laughs>